Hello and welcome. This is Pre-Uni New College. This video is intended to provide information about thinking skills and how to solve these questions through logical steps. These logical explanations and solutions will be beneficial. However, please be advised it does not give all the answers to solving the thinking skills questions. More importantly, consistent study and reading are essential for successful outcomes. Pre-Uni New College has always taught logic to students and this video is intended to guide and benefit you. This video and guideline about thinking skills is not intended as a shortcut to understand the logic. Students must study consistently to achieve successful results. Let's begin the video. Welcome to part one of an explanation of different logic questions that you may encounter. In part one, we'll be going through compound claims. A compound claim is one made up of two or more individual claims in order to assess its truth value. Firstly, we'll be going through conjunctions. Conjunctions assert that two or more claims are all true at the same time. For example, let's look at these two claims. Let P stand for the claim, I love pre-uni new college, and let C stand for the claim, I love school. Therefore, I love pre-uni new college and I love school is a conjunction of claims P and C. For this conjunction to be true, the individual claims P and C must also be true. Conjunctions can come in slightly different variations, but they are all still conjunctions. For example, let's look at the statement, I love pre-uni new college, but I don't like school. We can separate the claims into two individual claims. I love pre-uni new college and I don't like school. And together they still form a conjunction. This is because the statement can only be true if both the individual claims are true. Other connecting words that can form a conjunction include although, however, yet, and many more. Let's look at the truth values of conjunctions. Let P be the true claim that pre-uni new college is helpful. Let C be the true claim that pre-uni new college is fun. When we combine these two true claims to make the conjunction pre-uni new college is helpful and fun, the conjunction is also true. On the other hand, if one or more components of the conjunction is false, the whole sentence is false. For example, let P be the false claim that carrots are tasty, and let C be the true claim that carrots are orange. When we combine these two claims to make the conjunction carrots are tasty and orange, the conjunction is false. From this, we can deduct this truth table. If the individual claims P and C are true, the conjunction will be true. If P is true but C is false, the conjunction is false. If P is false but C is true, the conjunction is false. If both P and C are false, then the conjunction is false. Please note, that a sentence with more than two component claims is still a conjunction. Next, we'll be going through disjunctions. Disjunctions are statements that assert that at least one claim in a set of claims are true. For example, let's look at these two claims. Let P stand for the claim, the box is black, and let C stand for the claim, the box is brown. The Disjunction of P and C would be the box is black or brown. P and C are disjuncts, the individual claims that make up the disjunction. There are two types of disjunctions, inclusive or and exclusive or. Inclusive or includes the case where both claims P and C could be true. 
For example, let P be the claim pre-Union New College is located in Strathfield, and let C be the claim my school is located in Sydney. The disjunction statement would be pre-Union New College is located in Strathfield, or my school is located in Sydney. It is possible for both P and C to be true at the same time. On the other hand, exclusive OR excludes the case where both P and C could be true. For example, let P be the claim my sister is currently at pre-union new college and C be the claim my sister is currently at home. The disjunction of P and C would be my sister is currently at pre-union new college or is currently at home. It is not possible for P and C to be true at the same time. Before doing any question with a disjunction, we must identify whether we are dealing with an inclusive or, or an exclusive or. From this, we can deduce the inclusive or truth table and the exclusive or truth table. Both truth tables show that if P is false and C is true, the disjunction is still true, and vice versa. Both truth tables also show that if P is false and C is false, the disjunction is false. The difference is that if P is true and C is true, the, dis the disjunction is still true in the inclusive OR table, but the disjunction is false in the exclusive OR table. Note that a sentence with more than two component disjuncts is still a disjunction. Now, let's look at this example taken from the Selective School Thinking Skills Sample Test. Here, in the box. In the Junior Golf Championship, prizes are given out to the players who finish first, second and third and to anyone who gets a hole in one. Sam. Well, I know that one player scored a hole in one this year, so that means that four players will get prizes. Which of the following sentences shows the mistake Sam has made? Some players might deserve a prize even if they didn't score a hole in one? Or B. The hole in one might have been scored by a player who finished first, second or third. Or is it C? Younger players might find it difficult to score a hole in one. Or D? We do not know the total number of players in the competition. From the information we can obtain, the disjunction prizes are given out to the players who finish first, second and third and to anyone else who gets a hole in one. Separating this into component claims, we can let P be the claim coming first, second or third, and we can let C be getting a hole in one. This is an inclusive or because both claims can be true at the same time if a player wins a prize. Therefore, Sam's mistake is the hole in one might have been scored by a player who finishes first, second or third. Sam didn't realise that the disjunction stated in the information uses an inclusive OR. Next, we'll be looking at conditionals. Conditionals assert a logical relationship between P and C. Let's look at the two claims where P stands for the claim, I study hard, and C stands for the claim, I'll pass my exams. The conditional of P and C is, if I study hard, then I'll pass my exams. This demonstrates a relationship between the component claims P and C. Individually, the component claim could be false, but the conditional will still be true. P is the antecedent, meaning it comes before, and C is the consequent, meaning it is the consequence of the antecedent. When is a conditional false? Let's look at the conditional statement, if I study hard, then I'll pass my exams. Case one, 
If P is false and C is true, then the conditional is still true. The conditional says, if I study hard, I will pass the test. It doesn't say that the only way to pass is if I study hard. So failing to study hard and still passing doesn't falsify the conditional. Let's look at case two. If P is false and C is false, then the conditional is still true. If the antecedent is false and the consequent is also false, it actually proves that the conditional is true because if he didn't study hard, he wouldn't be able to pass the test. Now, case three. If P is true and C is false, then the conditional is false. This is the only case where we are certain that the conditional is false. We can therefore deduce the following truth table. If P is true and C is false, then the conditional will be false. All other combinations will lead to a conditional that is true. The annual canoe race has the following conditions in order to qualify to compete. If a team won the race last year and they have the exact same team, they will automatically qualify. The second way to qualify is to place first or second in the qualifying race beforehand. The final way to qualify is if a team selected as a wildcard team. Tommy, our team won the annual canoe race last year. However, we did not finish first or second in the qualifiers. If we get our third member back, we will be able to qualify. Chloe, if our third member does not come back to our team, we will not be able to qualify for the canoe race. If the information in the box is true, whose reasoning is correct? Is it Tommy's reasoning? Chloe's reasoning? Both Tommy's and Chloe's reasoning or neither Tommy's nor Chloe's reasoning? The answer here is Tommy's reasoning. Let's discuss the solution. From the information, we can list out the following conditionals. Number one, if a team won the race last year and they have the exact same team, then they will automatically qualify. Or, number two, if a team plays first or second in the qualifying race beforehand, then they will qualify. Or, number three, if a team is selected as a wildcard team, then they will qualify. Let P be the antecedent coloured red, and let C be the consequent blue. Note that these three conditionals are components of an inclusive or dis disjunction. If any of these antecedents are true, then they will qualify. First, let's look at Tommy's statement. Our team won the annual canoe race last year. However, we did not finish first or second in the qualifiers. If we get our third team member back, we will be able to qualify. His statement shows that he did not satisfy the second condition and we do not have enough information to know if he has satisfied the third condition or not. So let's focus on the first conditions and compare it to the truth table. We know that P is true and that the conditional statement is true. Therefore, claim C must be true. In this case, claim C is they will automatically qualify. Therefore, Tommy's reasoning is correct. Next, let's look at Chloe's statement. If our third member does not come back to our team, we will not be able to qualify for the canoe race. If they won't be able to qualify for the canoe race, then the antecedents of all the conditionals must be false. While the antecedents of the first two conditionals are indeed false, based on the given information, we cannot conclude that Chloe's team will not be selected as a wildcard team. If they are chosen for the wildcard team, but do not qualify for the canoe race, then claim P is true and claim C is false, but the conditional is false. The conditionals themselves must always be true. Otherwise, Chloe's reasoning is not sound. Therefore, 
Chloe's reasoning is incorrect. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it has helped you understand a bit about thinking skills and the logic needed to solve these questions. Please note, as stated in the start of the video, studying and reading consistently are essential for successful outcomes. Goodbye.